Welcome to Power Pivot video number six. Hey, I've already clicked on the link below the video to get to this web page there in the Power Pivot Excel 2013 series, which is a, a few pages down. We need to download an Access database, a text file, and an X file, and we will import from three different locations into an Excel workbook that contains our data model. So the point of this video is we're going to import, actually, we're going to import from different tables and then re-import and then edit our data and go back and see how awesome Power Pivot is and how easy it is to not only link to multiple sources, but change any of it at any time. All right, so I'm going to go over and I actually want to go look in Access first. So I'm going to double click and open this. Here are some tables. You could definitely open up the tables and look. This is a normalized database with a primary key, date, product ID, sales, units, revenue, discount. If we go look at products over here, there is the primary key that we'll use to link. And over here, here is the categories for each Product. Now, I'm going to close these tables because over in Access, we're going to see something totally amazing. Hey, this looks like the button over in PowerPoint for building relationships. And check that out. It almost looks like Power Pivot. But no, this is Access. We talked about the one to many relationship. So here is the fact sales table. We're linking product ID that has one to the many over in the facts table. Here, the products table, we have a second table where we have a category for each product. Now the cool thing about this is it's already got its relationships. And when we import all three tables into Power Pivot, it will inherit these relationships. So I'm going to close this Access Database. We're also going to import from a text file. Now these are the discounts that we get when we buy the boomerangs, but it happens to be in a text file. And then the uh, third source file, there isn't anything in here yet, but we will create inside of Excel what's called a date table. And we'll use this workbook here. So we've closed all three workbooks. Now I'm going to open up this Power Pivot 6 import from multiple source data start. All right, so there's nothing in this workbook at all, except for a name in the title bar. Now we want to go over to Power Pivot and Manage. And there we'll import, or we can use the keyboard Alt-B-M. All right, so last video, we did see how to use this from other sources. You could get from a database. That actually will have SQL Server access. From data services, you could click that in this Azure one. I'm not going to cover this, but this is great. And there's certainly other books and blogs on that. From other sources and existing connections, we'll come back to this later when we need to add a table from some existing connection. That's pretty cool. It used to be harder to find in 2010, but here it's right on the Get External Data RAM. We're going to click from other sources. We have our Access button here, just like we had from database. I'm going to click that and click Next. Now this looks similar to last video when we had our dialog box for importing from Excel. You could put your username, password, and save my password. And that would be more automatic the next time you do this. I'm going to click Browse. I'm going to browse to where my database is, double click, and now come down to Next. Select a list of tables. Sure, let's click Next. And there, this looks exactly like last video. I'm going to select all three because I am going to import them. But just as in last video, I'm going to go look at a preview. I think there's probably less trouble, at least I've had less trouble. Sometimes from Excel, we do crazy things in Excel. So this is more important over there. But I do it every single time I import any table. Hey, that's looking fine. Now check this out. In this video, we're definitely going to edit. And freestyle and general are two categories we're going to use, but we're never going to use other and toy. So watch this. I'm going to click the drop down, and I can uncheck. Now, this is a teeny column. It really is going to have no effect at all. It wouldn't really matter at all if we imported these. But it's convenient for us. If you have maybe tables with lots of items and you want just a few of them, this could really save. Because remember, when we import this into Power Pivot, it saves it in that columnar database where number of unique items matters. I'm going to click OK. So now, when I click OK, over here, there's an applied filter. You can even go and look at that applied filter. 
click OK. Now let's go to Products, Preview and Filter. Now, here is another example. This is a small table. If we imported this, it would not matter. But for large data sets, you definitely want to look through all the columns and simply uncheck the ones that you don't want. We're never going to use the description over there, so I'm not going to use it. Click OK. We could see the Applied Filter. And there is our Applied Filter. Click OK. Down to Sales. And this is a larger table, right? Still not big data, but this is a big enough table. Whereas we, if we had a column we didn't want, we definitely want to uncheck it. That table's looking fine. Click OK. Now when I click Finish, I have, I'm going to import these three tables from Access, retain the relationships, and these applied filters will be in effect. Click Finish. And just like that, we have imported. I click Close. Look, there's our three tables. Totally amazing. And look at this when we come over to Diagram View. There is, and I'm going to use this scroll bar to scroll down so I can see everything. There are our relationships. Now, this is the fact table here. I'm going to make this big because we'll have lots of uh, columns there later. Here's the products, and then here are the categories for each product. There we go. All right, let's go back to Data View. So we've imported from Access, and oh, it's very nice. It brought the relationships, too. Now let's go back to Home, Get External Data. And now I'm going to get from other sources. Let's go down to the bottom. Let's go to our text file. Click Next. And there's lots of other options down here, all sorts of different places you can get data from. It is simply amazing. And they'll all sit in one data model and can be refreshed with a single keyboard. All right, I'm going to click Next. I have not column, but I have tab delimited data. So I'm going to select Tab. Use first row as column header, you bet. I'm going to browse. There is my source data text. And there it is. There's my preview. And I'm not going to filter anything here. It just shows me as a text file. And click Finish. Here it's warning me that uh, I could get hurt from an external file. I'm going to click OK. And there we go. Click Close. And there is our discount table from a text file. Now at this point, I'm going to Control S here. Now I'd like to go back to Power Pivot, Manage Data Model, so Alt-B-M. And notice there's this Pivot Table button. And we've done that earlier in earlier videos. We've used that to create a pivot table from the current data model in this workbook. I'm going to close this Power Pivot window. And I'm going to try to do it a different way. I actually want to create a pivot table and try and group the dates and see that there's a problem. It's something that as we're learning Power Pivot, some of the cool tricks in pivot tables are just not available to us. Alt-NV to create a pivot table. And check this out. Use external, external data source, and we can choose a connection. And right inside, we have over on Tables, this workbook's data model. There it is. So I don't have to be over in that Power Pivot window through the Alt and V or the Insert Pivot Table dialog box. I can choose Tables and Data Model. Click Open. And that will be our connection. I'm going to put it into cell A1. Click OK. Now I'm going to go to F Sales, and I'm going to drag Date right here. And then I'm going to come over and right click. Oh, no. Oh, no, there's no group. There's no grouping dates in Power Pivot. You've got to be kidding me. So if you're just going to do a monthly report and summarize something simple like that, go use an Excel pivot table, because we're not going to be able to group. We're going to have to use what's called a calendar table or date table. All right, so I'm going to highlight everything in Alt-E-A-A. -A. That removes everything. Alt, that's the same as going to Home over here and Clear All. All right, so I have this. I'm going to Control S. I'm going to go and open up this source Power Pivot 6 source data table. Now, here's the deal. This is just a blank workbook. But 
It is not uncommon when you are using Power Pivot to go over to Excel and create some tables and then import them. We're going to keep this calendar table. And later, we're going to come back here and add some sales category tables. These are tables where it's really easy to create them from scratch in Excel. So having external data sources in Excel is not uncommon. In fact, calendar tables, sometimes your calendar tables come from your database. But having them in Excel is great. So right here, I'm just going to type dates. Control Enter, Control B, Enter. And I'm going to put 1 slash 1 slash 2014. Now, this calendar table or this list of all the possible dates, it's a unique list of dates of every possible date. I've already looked at my data set. I know that the very first day is one, January 1st, 2014. And the last day is December 31st, 2016. So I'm going to point to my fill handle and click and drag. And I know 3 times 365 is about 1,080. So I'm going to drag down here to 1,080, maybe somewhere right there. And you can see the screen tip. There it is, the 29, the 30. There it is, the 31st. Double click here, Control Home. We have to convert it to a table. Control T, Enter, Alt J T A. And I'm going to call this D Calendar. All right, so this is what we have to do if we're going to group dates. And we can also create things like the month number, the, the month text name, the quarter, the year, all sorts of helper columns. We can do it over in Power Pivot, which I am going to do. Some people like to do it over here in Excel, and that's fine. Our next table, I actually will build some formulas over in Excel. But I'm going to Control S. This is a table. I can close this, Alt F4. And now I'm back over here in Power Pivot, Alt B M. And now I can go from Other Sources, scroll down, Excel, use first row as column headers. I'm going to browse. There is the source data. Now, this workbook here only has one table. Later, we'll see this is going to be cool. This will be like our location for any Excel table we need. When we come over here later and create it, we'll just use existing connections and update through Power Pivot. So that's pretty cool. Double click. All right, so now I'm going to click Next. It sees I'm definitely going to preview and filter. It's looking good. Click OK, and now let's import it. Close. And now we have our calendar table. Now in our next video, we'll use this calendar table to see how to group. And there's a bunch of steps we're going to need to uh, do, but we'll do that next video. All right, I want to go back over to that same Excel work. But I'm, I'm going to pretend like this is a few months later. I've already been using the data model. But I need to open this source table up. And I'm going to create a new table. And we'll see how to refresh the connection or import new table. So I'm going to click on this new sheet, double click and call this DIS for disconnected, disconnected sales categories. Control C and Enter. Now, I want to build a table that categorizes sales so we can count how many are between 0 and 1,000, how many are between 1,000 and 2,000. I'm going to scroll in here. And I'm going to have the lower bound for our category and the upper. And I'm going to start with 0. And then I'm going to go equals this plus 500. I know usually I like to have formula inputs at cell reference. But remember, if we put anything over here, it might mess up our import. I'm going to say, hey, the lower's got to be that. And then this formula will work. I can copy this down. And I've looked at my data set, and everything ranges from 0 to 3,000. The cool thing about doing it over here in Excel is if later we have some sales that are bigger, we simply can come and update this and uh, expand the categories, refresh it over in our data model. And not only will the source tables update, but the pivot tables will also. Now we're going to need to convert this to a table. Control T, Enter, Alt J, T, A. And I'm going to Control V. I already had copied that from down there, and Enter. So now we have this as a table. Control S, Alt F4, Alt B, M. And now we want to not from other sources. We want to go to existing connections. I'm going to click Existing Connections. 
And isn't that cool? We have our axis, our text, and our Excel file. Now, if you're just refreshing the data, then you use that button or Control-Alt-F5. But here we have an existing connection, and I have new tables in there. And come down to Open. And sure enough, there are two tables. I'm not going to check that one. I'm just going to check this one. That's the new one, Preview and Filter. There it is. Click OK. Click Finish. Close. And there we have imported a second time a new table. Now, I actually forgot something over there on purpose. And oftentimes when I'm building data models, I build some stuff over in Excel, and I later have to come and fix it, like add more categories. But I actually want to add a, an explicit category that says greater than or equal to 0 and less than 500. So I'm going to Control S and come over and open up that same workbook. Double click and open this up. And now I want to come over here, and I'm going to insert a column. Insert, resize table. Let's say we want it like that. Click OK. And call this sales category, and Enter. I'm going to make this big because we're going to do a formula here. Now, this formula, you absolutely could do it over in Power Pivot, but sometimes you know Excel better, and you're like, I'm going to do this here. And what I really want is a text string that gives me the whole sales category. So I'm going to use the dollar function. The dollar function will apply currency format as a text string, comma. I don't want any decimals, so 0. Right now, you could see that that would be zero dollars F2 and I'm going to join this to shift 7 that's the ampersand in double quotes space greater than or equal to net revenue space less than space and double quote ampersand dollar boop, and down arrow comma, 0, close parentheses. Now, this is a convention for labels. Not everyone uses this convention. This is from math. You know, you have your variable in the middle and the operator. That means this net revenue has to be greater than, I hope I'm glad I read that explicitly. The net revenue has to be greater than or equal to the lower. And the net revenue has to be less than the upper. Now, because we have a 500 here and here, of course, I'm not having the equal sign on both sides. Double click and send it down. Double click, Control S. So it's looking like that's going to work. I'm going to close this. If it doesn't, we'll come back and edit Alt B M. Now we need to get the new column from our Excel workbook. And check this out. We originally imported and created a connection between that Excel workbook when we imported the D calendar. Then when we wanted to get a new table, right? this table here, we went to existing connections. But here, this table already exists. It's not a whole new table. So I can simply go over to Design and Table Properties. Table Properties. Look at that. It's already looking over there and seeing this table. The check mark is not checked. All we have to do is check it. So we saw earlier in our import that we could uncheck to eliminate a column, but we can also come back later and get columns by checking. I'm going to click Save. And just like that, we have our lower and upper, which we'll actually use these numbers and formulas. And then this will be the category that we can drop into the pivot table row area, for example. Now, let's go look at our tables, our table here, our calendar table, our this table right here. And we imported this from a text file. We decided we didn't need it. So how do we remove a table from the data model? Simply come down here, just like a sheet in Excel. I can right click, delete. And it'll say, what are you crazy? You don't want to remove it from the data model. Are you sure you don't want to permanently delete this? Let's say yes. And that table is gone. Now, next video, we're going to add some, some columns. But I'm looking through here. Each one of these is looking OK. We have a lot of work to do to this table next video. Let's do one last thing. Let's go to Home. 
Let's go to Diagram View, and we have our fact table. These ones were connected from our access import. We absolutely will take this date table and have lots of extra columns, and we will connect it. Uh, next video, and here's our disconnected table with our uh, sales categories. We go back to Data View. So that was a bunch. We imported from Access, imported from the text file, imported from Excel where we actually made our tables. We went back to an existing connection to get a whole new table. We went back to Table Properties and brought in an extra column. Uh, let's see, when we uh, brought our tables in, we filtered. We even deleted a table. All right, so next video, we'll start off and we'll have a bunch of fun with calendar tables and calculated columns and then build a few pivot tables. All right, we'll see you next video.